Kansas City's primary election when voters did not re-elect Mayor Mark Funkhauser for a second term. The mayor and his wife are in the studio right now for their first post-election interview. Political reporter Chris Hernandez is live with the mayor and his wife. Chris. Well, thank you, Curtis and Krista. We are joined today by Kansas City Mayor Mark Funkhauser and his wife, Gloria Squitero, and she also acted as his campaign manager. So we're going to be talking to them about that. Thank you both for coming in today. I guess you might call this a special edition of Fridays with Funk. So uh, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Um, you've had about a week now to reflect on the election. Um, what, why do you think voters did not send you back for a second term? Well, you know, I think that we brought this city back from the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, but in doing that, uh, we cost uh, a lot of people a lot of money, the people who had been pushing it uh, in the direction it was going, and we made, uh, we made some enemies. That was too difficult to overcome in the end, and, and when you put t that together with the fact that we were outspent about five or six or seven to one. Uh, that made it very difficult. Okay. Gloria, as I mentioned, you acted as his campaign manager. Is there anything in retrospect that you would have changed about how you campaigned, about how you tried to get your message out? Oh, my goodness, no. Uh, we worked really hard uh, nonstop, and we did everything that we could do uh, to get our message out. It was really hard to get a message out. Uh, and especially with uh, the negative campaign that was going on against us in the star, um, it was hard to counteract that. But Funk's team, in the end, did everything that was humanly possible to let the world know that he brought the city back from the brink of bankruptcy, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough time or money. You know, I mentioned on Facebook today that we were going to be interviewing you guys and asked uh, viewers if they had any comments or, or questions for you guys and the theme that I got from a couple of the comments was um, in terms of your role in the administration early on we've talked about that many times before you've mentioned mayor that during the latter half of your administration that was not an issue so the question is do you think it was just too much of an issue to overcome from the beginning the things that happened in the beginning did they just make up the voters mind at that point and you just couldn't overcome I mean Gloria do you think that you should have done something to address that more directly? I don't think it had anything to do with me. Uh, I don't think that Funk supporters think it has anything to do with me. The city's been going in the wrong direction for 40 years. It took a courageous leader to turn that around. And when you're at the end of the day, when it's about money, it's going to get ugly. And it got ugly. And it got personal. And it was ugly fast. Uh, the only thing we could have done different is to not run in the first place mm -hmm. or to give up our values about what he wanted to do in office. And we made a decision from the beginning that we were doing this for the right reasons and not straying from that. So I have no regrets about what he got accomplished. And, uh, yeah. I think that, you know, as, as Gloria mentioned, um, if, if she had not had a prominent role, the folks that were pushing back, it was about money and it was about power and they would have found another reason or, or two or three reasons. I don't think at the end of the day that, um, you know, it would have been a, a different trajectory if we had done it differently. You think it, they would have just, the people opposed to you would have found a different reason to create turmoil? And, and probably a different personal reason. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have made some other uh, you know, people talked about initially, you know, they, they didn't like the old car that I drove and so on and so forth. Um, you know, in politics often, uh, and, and you see this at every level, uh, the, 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 the political operatives, the consultants, the talking heads and so forth will make it about uh, a, a matter that is not uh, sure. a matter of substance. Um, let me, and I'll give you a classic example of this, and I've used this example over and over in, in um interviews and so forth. But in November, the uh, outside auditors reported the city was in the best financial shape it had been in, in many years, mm -hmm. uh, and it got virtually no uh, traction as a message to the voters uh, in the media. But if Gloria had gotten a speeding ticket, that would have been all over the front pages. Sure. Let's talk about, uh, you have two months left in your term. Is there anything specific that you're going to push to try to accomplish in those last two months? You know, what we're going to, I'm going to continue to be very strong and active in the mayor's office. Um, I continue to support the initiatives that I have always supported. 
Um, and uh, toward the end of those two months, I'll be working with whoever the voters choose uh, to make a smooth transition and to, and to try to make sure that, the, that the, the, we don't lose some of the momentum we've gained. And what's next for you? What will you do after you leave office? Well, you know, I, I am looking at uh, what my opportunities might be. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a uniquely qualified individual. I've been an auditor for almost 30 years. I've been a college professor at, in, in graduate school for most of that time. I've got a Ph.D. Uh, I would like to teach or go to some sort of a foundation or think tank or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything left for you, uh, Gloria? Any special plans after you uh, finish helping him finish out his term? Well, I know it's uh, a little weird to say, but I feel like God meant for him to come in and, and try to help this city. And wherever God takes us next is still unknown to us, but we're okay. willing servants. Okay. Well, I appreciate you both coming in for your first post-election interview with us here. I'm sure we'll be talking again in the near future. And again, uh, the general election is March 22nd, features a choice between lawyers Mike Burke and Sly James. The vote on whether to renew the e-tax is just a week later on April 5th. Uh, let's go back to the anchor desk with Kristen Curtis. All right. Hey, Chris, thank you. Um, Mayor, I do have a question before you head out with your wife. Um, you obviously, you were elected, uh, you know, you didn't have all of this uh, political experience, and that's why people elected you. Some people voted for you because of that. Uh, what are you going to take away from your tenure as mayor? What lessons have you learned about politics? Well, you know, I've learned a lot about the need to communicate and to communicate at multiple levels. Uh, I, I knew like that uh, going in, I, I focused on town hall meetings and so forth. But it was only after I was in a little while that I realized that the regional chamber didn't represent the business community and that I had to visit CEOs of businesses and small businesses face-to-face, um, one-on-one. Uh, and and I, I, you know, I knew intellectually, but I didn't really understand that the council was only an instrument of power and that you, if you want to change what's going on, you have to talk to folks in the community. All right. Uh, all right. Well said, Mayor. Thank you. And